Welcome back, my friends. So the Sega Dreamcast has been desperately needing a modern reimagining of its controller for a while now. With the original, it's not the worst controller ever conceived, but in my opinion, it's nowhere near the best either. Not a very comfortable controller to use. It served its purpose during its time, but like for fighting games as an example, this was horrible for me. I just couldn't use it. It, it just didn't feel right. So this now gets to be set aside because today we're going to be taking a look at the Retro Fighters Striker DC gamepad. So they did send this to me for purpose of review a little early. Um, I did back them on Kickstarter as well, so can't wait to get that one. Um, I did test out a pre-production model of this a while ago, and they told me between that version and this new production one that's you know for retail that there has been improvements. Since I used the pre-production, I was blown away. So for this one to be improved even more so, can't wait to check it out. So I know a lot of people are looking forward to this and here is the packaging. I can't believe like they, <laughs> this thing is like, it feels heavy. The packaging they used is like some hard ass uh, cardboard. They, they up their game. This is like premium packaging type stuff right here. Very nice. I mean, I'm not a package snob, but I, I do try to point that kind of stuff out when I notice it. They really upped it. So there's a bunch of information on the back. I'm not going to read all that. I mean, you guys could read for yourself, right? Freeze frame. Boom. Um, the main thing, though, extra long 10-foot cord. So if for a wired controller, that is huge, having a very long cord. All the other features there. We're going to test this thing out. So let's go ahead and open her up. Come on. <laughs> there we go. So we get a few things in here. Some Retro Fighters stickers. Interesting. I don't think they've put stickers in their controllers before. Maybe they have and I never noticed, but that's that's neat. Cool. An FAQ. Why does the analog stick feel like it has light resistance? Uses a high-end micro potentiometer. Um, don't worry about there. There's no drift issues here. We use smaller components due to ergonomics. Um, so they're just stating that the uh, the analog stick is a more sensitive, accurate analog stick. So they have a little FAQ there from the future. I guess uh, frequently asked questions that they figured people would ask. So there's that. Interesting. We're not going to spend this whole video reading stuff. A uh, little manual thingy. Giving some thanks. Telling you what the features are. The turbo, the clear function, all that good stuff. For turbo, hold down the turbo button and the button you'd like to activate. To remove turbo, hold down clear and the button you'd like to clear. So there you go. LNR has no turbo function, just the face buttons. So there's that. Oh, got a little keychain too. Sweet. A little tissue paper. This might come in handy during this uh, crisis. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this. You never know. It might be a tissue paper emergency. <laughs> and then here she is. The Retro Fighters. Striker DC. Like, really, they're, they're packaging. They, they did up their game. I know not a lot of people are going to care, but the packaging is very nice. Very nice. And there she is. In all her glory. So the biggest thing for me with this controller is having the L and R buttons up here and also having the analogs in the back. This makes it a lot more accessible for fighting games. If you're not going to have like a six button layout on the controller, this is the way to do it. So if you're somebody who loves the Dreamcast, I think having this layout and having the L and R's there will definitely be beneficial. Uh, that way... You can still play all your original games that didn't require any of this stuff without having to adjust, but you still have access to that. So that, that's one thing that I want to point out. That's one of the reasons I really liked the controller when I first tested it was having these. And it's a hell of a lot more comfortable to hold. So there's the D-pad. The D-pad feels good. The uh, analog stick, it is like there's a lot more resistance on the original, like in their little FAQ. Um, this feels a lot less resistance. So this is something that if you're so used to that, you will have to get used to this, but I still think this is a good analog. You just kind of have to adjust a little bit, but it performs beautifully well. I mean, we're I'm basing that off of using a pre-production one. We're going to test this one out, so we'll get to that in a second. The D-pad feels pretty good. Start button. The one thing I do want to point out is the A, B, X, Y, they do feel they are clicky. 
they are very clicky and they feel a lot more stiff than the original. So this is like over a 20 year old controller. So this, the membranes and whatnot could be worked in, but I don't remember these ever being that stiff. Um, so that's one thing between the original and this is the face buttons are a little more stiff, but still responsive. If your analogs and all that good stuff, you could use your accessories, your VMU, your rumble or whatever they're called vibration packs. And then the one change too is the cord comes up from the top instead of on the original, it came down the bottom, but it had that little like hole right there that you could pop it into to have it come up that way. But there's, there's one change there. Long, long cord. So we're gonna go ahead and undo this and plug it in. Power in the system off. You never wanna plug into your controller um, while the power is on on a Dreamcast, just in case. So there we go, let's take a look. We are running this Dreamcast through DC HDMI uh, and we have the GDMU in there. So we're loading games from SD card. No issue, any mods you have, the controller's gonna work just fine. As you see, the screen came up on the VMU for my GDMU, so it's recognizing that, no problem. So let's test out real quick, uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. See how everything responds. We gotta do those Hadoukens, the dragon punches. You know, the half circles, the the quarter circle, all those different motions. We got to test that on the D-pad and the analog and see how well we do. If you can't perform a Hadouken like nine times out of ten with this controller, then it's, it's not worth a damn. You guys know the way I feel about that. So we're going to test that out. I say nine times out of ten because occasionally, you know, you might mess up. This cord is so long, it's kind of getting in my way since I'm like two feet away from my screen. Or like, I'm like six inches away from my uh, system. So that's a good thing, long ass cord. So I believe this should be our high kick and then high punch, yeah. Hurricane kick, fireball, and test the D-pad first. Our little kick move, just the forward down forward. That's working just fine. Dragon punch. <laughs> working just fine. The D-pad, actually, I, I, I can tell they did improve the D-pad from the, uh, the earlier versions of this controller. So that's definitely a good thing. All right, we're gonna use the analog stick solely next. Because it is less resistant, so we gotta see how this reacts. Ah, son of a. And our back uh, triggers, you know, they function just the same as the front, but it just feels so much better to use these. You could still use these, whatever is most comfortable for you, but there you go. Not having any issues with the D-pad or the analog. Let's, uh, next fight, let's, let's check out the uh, turbo. Just make sure that works. Uh, let's see. Yeah, turbo's on to clear it. Let me make sure I cleared it. Yeah, I cleared it. So turbo works just fine for those of you who want to cheat. Let's go ahead and change to another game real quick. Soul Calibur.
Oh, I wanted to I wanted to get a ring out. So everything feels very responsive. No complaints. Hell of a lot more comfortable controller in my opinion. Like great option. You know, since I got that pre-production version, I was using that quite a bit. I set this aside. I stopped using this. This is done for for me. So between the two, what am I choosing? I I'm choosing the Striker DC from Retro Fighters. Um, like I said, just being very upfront. They sent this to me for purpose of review and I tested out a pre-production version. It but I still like it. And you know, I've been critical of their products in the past. So I do want to point that out. They're a company that appreciates feedback. Um, and they've taken a lot of the feedback I have had with their controllers. So I, I got a lot of respect for them, man. For me to be somebody who is very critical, um, very harsh with my criticisms in the past for them to be like, you know what, man, like, let us know what you think. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. These guys got my money. Um, like I said, I back their Kickstarter. Can't wait to see what else they have in store for us. Great option. If you want to take a look, link in the description. I know it's not going to be for everybody, but my thoughts are right now, this is the controller for me for the Dreamcast. Uh, VMU works. So, hey, guys, really do appreciate you hanging out with me. And with that said, I will catch you all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.